Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Monday, January 24th, with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Christ has appeared to us. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Christ has appeared to us. O come, let us worship him. All right, today we have Romans. Um, we begin in Romans chapter 12, verse 14, and go into chapter 13, verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one for evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it, all, as it depends on you, leave peaceably, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than, we, when, we first, than when we first believed. The night is gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. All right. Um, yeah, so, you know, this is this is all law. Um so not not surprising here, you know. This is, these are Paul's outlining how we are supposed to live, what God expects from us, you know. So bless those who persecute you, rejoice with those who rejoice, repay no one evil for evil, um, you know. Feed your feed your enemy, um, be subject to the governing authorities. All this stuff, just all these descriptions of what a proper human being looks like, operating out in the wild. <laughs> this is what a human looks like. And so, um, you know, we, we definitely hear this as law. And so its its initial work is certainly to convict us, to show us that, you know, this is expected and we fail, um, to show us uh, that um, we fall short of the glory of God, which then points us to the gospel, forgiven, redeemed, <laughs> um, saved from the condemnation of the law. But now, then through the gospel, then, we now are able to look at the law and and embrace it, to, to, to love it as God's word. And um, I talked about this, well I, well, I went over it a little bit in my sermon yesterday, um, 
but I think we talked about it a little bit more in Bible study, in that, um, you know, the law is good. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the law. The, the problem is with our sin. And um, I think we, we get, well, I think we more often pit law and gospel against one another. Like, you know, the law is bad, the gospel is good. We don't like the law, we like the gospel. As we have this picture of the, them both in opposition. But that's not how they are. They're, they're together. They work together. And really, um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not sure how far I would push this, but, um, you know, I've been personally trying to... Um, I don't even know how to explain this all this much, but um, I think when we when we conceive of, when we think of the law, you know, it is kind of God's tool to to get us to the gospel, to call us to repentance. That He's given us the law in order to, you know, reveal our sin, to point to the fact that we need a savior, which leads us to the gospel, and. Um, Honestly, I'm I'm trying to in my in, in my own reading of scripture, just my own study, to try to pivot a little bit away from that in terms of thinking of uh, thinking of it as as far as God gave us this to, you know, I mean, really kind of like a little cudgel to kind of beat us over the head with. I think that's the the way we kind of think about it. We we come to it even when we have the proper understanding of the law convicts us and and. Um, and we go to the gospel from there because, um, really, you know, God gives us the law. <laughs> God is loving and merciful and gracious. And so when he gives the law, it is not, I mean, the law has, you know, yes, it, it reveals our sinfulness. Yes, it does all this, but it, it's not like he, he does this only, you know, he gives it to us for that. He gives it to us for our own good. I mean, what is the law if, I mean, it's nothing more than God's design for human beings what what god how god created us so if we never f fell from sin if adam and eve never um you know transgressed the law just would simply describe what their life what our lives would look like and so it's not that that god brings it down to bear on us in this way it's just that it because of our sin that's the way now we come to the law and it's it's a <laughs> It's a very slight, subtle kind of different way of looking at it. It doesn't change anything about the law, but it's just, it really does put the, it puts more of the condemnation on our side <laughs> and um, keeps the law in, in this good place. So that way it, it just, in my, in my mind, it helps to distinct, distinguish that the law is good that there is nothing wrong with the law. Um, because, I mean, we, we just through our own sinfulness, we, we resist the law and we don't like it. So it is far easier for us to dislike the law, which then that tendency makes it so that when we read scripture, when we hear scripture, um, we're more likely to latch onto the things we don't like and, and pick up on those things that, you know, where the law says do this and we're like, Ooh, I don't like that. And so we get this just negative kind of, um, attachment to the law in that regard. When the law is not bad, it is good for us. It is a very good thing. Um, and the proper place for the negativity is right here in our hearts. Um, so that's just kind of my, my sort of <laughs> a way of navigating that um, to try to, uh, to better place um, the natural inclination to avoid and avoid the law and then think of it as a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. So anyway, um, you know, this is, this is all good stuff. You know, we just don't like it because we're sinful human beings. Um, but this right here, what we have today, it describes what we should be looking like. You know, this is what the Christian life should, should look like. Good citizen, good person, friendly, outgoing, um, I mean, outgoing in the sense of serving one another, you know, not not like every Christian needs to be an extrovert or anything, but, um, you know, certainly just loving your loving your neighbor, doing what is honorable, um, living peaceably. These are things that Christians do. And it's not, I mean, as Christians, we, we, we understand this as, as a thing, but I mean, this is what human beings are supposed to look like. This is what we were all created to look like. Um, so that's, uh, you know, it's it's... 
we, we definitely fall short. <laughs> we definitely fall very short. Uh, but thanks be to God. Um, he is gracious and merciful to forgive us. And so even like beginning this week, you know, starting off today on Monday, how, uh, you know, we can look at this, we can, you know, make little bullet points on a little notepad and carry it with us. Um, it's a good reminder, <laughs> you know, and we do, we need to be reminded, like, this is what our life is supposed to look like. Um, but just know that, you know, this is, this is what should be how your life should look at the end of the day. When you realize ha haven't quite, uh, achieved that <laughs> or even come close, um, you know, Turn to, turn to God and then receive his forgiveness. Know that you're forgiven and know that he gives you um, life eternal in spite of your failures, in spite of your uh, inability to do this uh, perfectly. Christ did it perfectly for you and uh, you are righteous and holy in his sight because of Jesus Christ. So um, this is all good stuff that we do for our neighbor for their well-being. This is not a salvation thing. This is just simply us being us. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> All right. I think that's about it. So let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your govern governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, blessings to you as you start this brand new week. Uh, this is, what, the last week of January. Whew, that flew by. Wow. Well, have a wonderful Monday. Hope everything goes well for you today, and I uh, look forward to uh, being back at it tomorrow morning. So, until then, peace be with you.